Hello, Davy. Hello, Caesar. Oh, I was wondering. I heard that in Japan. They have really good food. That's right, Caesar. Good to eat. Well, it's so far away. I don't know how to get there. Don't worry, Caesar. I can help you. I know how to get there. Oh, really? But I don't have time to travel all the way there. Don't worry, Caesar. What do you want? I have a friend over there. He can send us back some. Well, I was really hoping to eat some calamari. Hello and welcome to Caesar's Snack Sandwich. Today we're uh, on Twitter, I guess, taking a look at what Paul P has uh, tweeted here. Now, he's, for those of you who don't want to read this and try to think about what is he talking about here, I've decided to make a video that basically, you know, in my style of flowcharts, I'm going to explain what is he talking about here. And it's basically about cross-chain yield aggregation. It's pretty new, it's pretty complicated stuff, but uh, I'll explain what they're doing now and, and maybe I'll talk a little bit about the future and what kind of possibilities this might hold. Okay, so let's go over to a flowchart and take a look at this. Okay, so here we are on my flowchart. Here we have Dollar Bill and he's got a bit of ETH in his wallet and he wants to invest it. You know, he's a busy guy. He doesn't want to yield farm. He doesn't want to go all over DeFi, but he wants to invest his uh, ETH somewhere. And he sees and he hears about all these wonderful, um, wonderful yield farming opportunities in DeFi over on another blockchain. Because he's here over on ETH and there's another blockchain over here. In this case, we're going to use Binance Smart Chain, but it could be any chain. It could be all, multiple chains, right? So he sees that over there and he's like, uh, I, I kind of want to take advantage of that or let's say he just doesn't care and he just there is yield over here but he doesn't even know about it maybe so what can he do he can give his ETH to mr. ape here ape tax volt and the ape tax volt will then decide what to do with these ETH and try to make some yield now the ape tax volt could uh, put the yield somewhere on ethereum and make some money there on ethereum as well but he could also try to take advantage of these other well, possibilities on other blockchains so what does he do is he has a friend over on another blockchain in this case he has fanny pack over here on uh, Binance Smart Chain, who's uh, got some ideas and has some knows the yield farming opportunities over there. But you know, there's a big gap between them. There's a big uh, gaping hole in between them. So how does he get his ETH over there? So basically, he will send his ETH to the multi-chain bridge. Now I've done a video on the multi-chain bridge on how to do this manually. If you wanted to, you could do this manually and uh, take advantage of these. But these guys are going to take care of it for Bill because Bill's you know busy. He's a banker. He's got lots. He's going to put in his time at the office right so if you want to watch the video I'll put a link to that at the at the end of this video and you can watch about that and find out how does this bridge work so to speak so basically he sends this ETH that is like an ERC 20 it's native ETH on the ETH blockchain he sends it to the multi bridge and the multi bridge locks it up inside a contract just basically sticks it in this wallet locked in there you can't get it out for any reason except one okay so then uh, what happens next is that it magically mints what we call any ETH which is another kind of ETH on to the Binance smart chain so he they mint up this token and they give it to this little proxy fanny pack it's a contract waiting on the other side that has the same address the same wallet address as the contract that uh, this guy has over here. So then he uh, receives this any ETH, but any ETH is not really useful in the yield farms and the stuff over here on Binance Smart Chain. So he has to go to Nerve. Nerve is a little marketplace. I did a video on this and I'll also link to that in the cards at the end of this video. So he sends it to e uh, Nerve and he swaps it for ETH uh, BEPT20 Ethereum. So this is Binance Smart Chain pegged Ethereum. So he then has now this in his wallet. Now, what is he going to do with this? He's going to send it to the Ape Tax Vault on Binance Smart Chain. And the Ape Tax Vault on Binance Smart Chain is going to use it to 
yield farm. Now remember, these volts can have multiple strategies, so it doesn't have to just go to one farm on Binance Smart Chain. It could go to many, many, okay? There's a lot of possibilities for this ape on Binance Smart Chain to take advantage of yielding farming over there. So Bill's pretty happy. His ETH is inside this vault, or he put his ETH in here, and it's basically pulling all these yields from these other blockchains. Now, like I said, this bridge does go to Phantom as well right now, so they could have a fully another, you know, another guy, another, you know, proxy animal over here on another blockchain doing the same thing with some of this ETH, right? So there are a few things that we have to consider, and that is what happens when it goes back. So basically, it's just the reverse. When the yield farming maybe dries up or, you know, the APYs go down quite a bit, maybe this ape tax will pull the, it out of there. And he's like, oh, I still have some ETH and that I owe all the way back to Bill over here. So he's going to send it to the, the proxy, the little koala here. The koala will swap it for any swap or back to any and then send it to, towards the bridge. It will burn this any swap. Uh, any ETH and then it will release this other ETH here back to the ape tax and the ape tax will release it back to Bill if that's what he wants. Okay, so there are a few things that we have to consider and that are of importance and that these guys need to consider when they're doing this. There's a few like, oh, I don't call them risks, but there's you know, important things that they need to think about while they're doing that. And that are these three things. There is a possibility that there is already you know, a whole bunch of yield farming opportunities already here on ETH. And then this kind of becomes pointless, right? But there's a balance, right? If if he puts all of his ETH into this opportunity on Ethereum, then the yield will go down. So maybe he can put some onto these options on Ethereum and then balance it out and put some over here onto Binance Smart Chain to get some at some of this other yield as well. Now, another important concern is the time that it sometimes takes for tokens to transfer through the bridge. Now, the bridge is not instantaneous. It requires some um, some viewing. There's some oracles watching things and stuff. And uh, Basically, they're watching for this transaction. And when they see this transaction, then they're going to mint this. But it's sometimes it takes them times to see this transaction because there's a lot of transactions on Ethereum that they need to basically skim through. So every second or every minute that it's sitting on the bridge is minute that they're losing yield that they could have put in here. So this is something they need to take into their calculations as well. Now, another possibility is some slippage. Now, this nerf uh, is pretty good. The, the two tokens are pegged and they are arbitraged, but there could be slippage. Now, especially if this pool is not very deep and he sends, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe a hundred million dollars worth of ETH, it might cause some slippage here. And then that would be a loss, right? There would be slippage both ways or so forth. There could They have to take into consideration the health of nerve finances, liquidity pool, and how much they can actually go through here without having slippage and price impact and so forth. And it's going back the same way. Going back, there is also that same consideration. So I hope this makes it a lot clearer what they're doing and the potential here. The, there's a huge potential that because this bridge can go to other blockchains as well. So it could, in, in essence, go to infinite blockchains. And then it can also have this, this uh, vault here, this Ape Tax vault, can also farm a whole bunch of yield opportunities on Binance Smart Chain. So as you can see, it it's, has potential to make Bill's life very simple. Bill has his ETH. He believes in the ETH token and he basically gives it to the ape tax and the ape tax just goes for it. Now, ape tax is experimental, so this is not something you want to put all your ETH into. There is possibility of maybe some losses or some, you know, temporary losses or the yield not being extremely high. So you don't want to put all of your ETH into here. But if you want to support this development of this tech, then I would suggest you to consider some ETH into here. Now, as, as this you know, this concept gets proven and bugged out and everything becomes very smooth and, you know, there's no issues and the bridge is very smooth and quick, then maybe they will put this into a more public production style thing. Okay, so I hope this has been interesting and it's interesting for me and uh, thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.